Hello there everyone and welcome to John Drinks, the channel which I, John, have a drink and today we're doing a beer. We're doing that beer. We're doing that beer that every fucker and their grandmother is talking about at the minute. Aldi took it upon themselves to rip off Brewdog. You might have heard about it in the news. I think it's in the National Enquirer and everything at this point. Um, yeah, people have been going a little bit crazy for that. I didn't know this had happened until a video by Jake Overton came up and he was like, oh, hey, yeah, this happened. Um, and I've been trying to get my hands on it for the past few days and it's not that easy to track down, or it hasn't been for me anyway. Um, I must have gone to like four or five Lidl's before I realised I was in the wrong discount supermarket and then a few more Aldi's before I managed to actually get my hands on this. But it's here now and I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison because I'm original like that. Anyway, um, so we've got the current Punk IPA, which as I'm sure many commenters have said in the past, is not a shadow on its own self, but we won't go in that conversation. Um, it's not as good as it used to be! <clears throat> Sorry. And we're going to have a look at this. My understanding is it's, it's close, but it's not exactly, exactly there. Um, the brand that they've gone for is kind of, sort of a pull on their old branding. Obviously, they've, they've changed their marketing fairly recently to, um, what's that? Um... Well, it's Belhaven, really, isn't it? Sort of Rebel Belhaven, I think, is what we'd what we'd call that. Um, nice and generic, yeah. I remember when they used to kind of be, you know, at the at the peak of innovation, and now they're just kind of following everyone else's lead. It's sad. It's sad when that happens. You can't even say that they've been taken over by a big company. It's just, I don't know, if they just stop caring or something. I don't really know what's going on with them at the moment. But it's sad. It is a little sad. And we've got this. So. I heard a couple of comments saying that you can actually get the Punk IPA for cheaper than the anti-establishment. And I thought the same thing um, until I checked the receipt and found that this is 30p cheaper. They're basically the same price, but you know, if you're really counting your pennies, well, if you're really counting your pennies, you probably shouldn't be spending it on beer, you should be spending it on broccoli or something. But if that is the case, then it is cheaper. Um, when I went to pick this up, I think I spotted in the corner of my eye that was like a price for this, and I was like, oh, that's cheaper than that, that's weird. I'm pretty sure I've done what everyone has done in Aldi and Lidl at some point and looked at the price below, not above, because that's how every other supermarket works, but not these guys. So that's probably what happened. Brewdog are quite well known for their heavy-handed marketing waffles, so let's see if these guys have copied that as well. Uh, Anti-establishment IPA is a genre-defining craft beer, it sounds Brewdog so far. A classic gold pour delivers a burst of new world hops that create a cacophony of flavour. A hit of caramel, interesting, uh, gives way to giant tropical waves while the exotic undertones dissolve into a biting bitter finish. We've got alliteration and everything, okay. Uh, especially produced for Aldi stores, nobody seems to be keen to take responsibility for this. It's 5.6%, which is the exact same ABV as the Punk IPA, um, just in case you weren't sure if this was a direct pull or not. Uh, and on the back of Brewdog, they're suffering from the Edinburgh tourist trap effect at the minute, which is going down the kind of like, oh, we were traditional, we were here first kind of line with the beer that started it all. This isn't the beer that started it all. This is you know, a sort of a weak copy of the beer that started it all. But again, hey, if YouTube would give me chapter points, you would have been able to skip all that. But um, apparently I'm not upper middle class enough or whatever it is that the cast system in YouTube is these days. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm just going to pour a little bit and let that calm down. Somebody is also probably going to say, oh, well, one's out of a can and one's out of a bottle and they're going to be a bit different. Well, yeah. I mean, if we're going to get technical, they're different beers, so yeah, they're going to be different. Um, this is a bit of fun. One thing I will say, actually, on opening this, the aroma is a lot stronger than on opening that. Okay. It's not as giddy a pour, that one, although maybe that's just because I'm paying attention more. I don't know. The colour looks very fucking similar. I would say that this one is clearer and this one is a bit hazier, but there's not much in it. One thing I am noticing actually, the head is sticking around on this a lot more. Um, this one has already thinned out quite significantly, in fact it's borderline watery at this point. I'm going to nose them and, and see what they smell like. So, anti a stab. Do you know what, it's reminding me of Punk IPA. 
yeah, yeah, spiky pineapple. It's a little sweet. It's like you, it's like you tried to mix together pineapple and Werther's original a little bit. There's something a little bit butterscotchy about it, and a little bit. Something a little dank, but not in kind of like a good IPA dank. It's more kind of like a, you have to take the bin bags out and you've been putting it off for a few days kind of it. It's not a good... How dank ever became a good thing, I don't really know. The more lemony this one. It's um, the more fruit forward, less sweet. It doesn't... If this were a blind tasting right now, I can guarantee that I'd be saying this is the knockoff. And it's not. It smells washier. Uh, it's, it smells like this, just more muted. Which is odd. That is not... Okay, this is already not going in the direction I thought it was going to be. So I'm actually kind of giddy to kind of try them side by side. Well... Mm, I'm going to start with the Punk IPA this time. Because judging from the smell, this one might actually be the weaker one. Man, that's changed, hasn't it? Wow. It has definitely become the stuff that they used to slag off. It's sort of a generic pale ale. Broughton do some pretty good cask IPAs. It tastes like one of those. It's got more of sort of a, like a caramel note to it. It's still got a little bit of like a, a pungent, skunky note to it, but it's almost like, more like it's an afterthought now, rather than the main star of the show. It's not very bitter. Which is shocking, because that used to be the big thing that was punk, was how bitter and in your face and almost kind of like, ooh, do I like this, do I not, kind of a thing. It, it was a good beer, man. It was such a good beer. I think I miss it. Again, if I was doing this blind, I'd say that this is a poor imitation. There's a bit of bitterness in there, but it's, it's, it's a shadow of its former self. Okay, and let's see what the anti-establishment is like. Much sweeter, even less bitter. It is noticeably more watery. It is closer to like a golden ale rather than like an IPA. There's more sort of soft buttery caramel notes coming in from the malt component. The hops aren't really making themselves known. There's like a slightly nasty bitterness at the back of the mouth once you've kind of finished drinking the rest of the beer. It's kind of like an afterthought, but it's not up front at all. And I'm not getting any of the tropical notes. It's not unpleasant. It's not a very good imitation. That comment stands for both of them, to be fair. Do you know what? I know exactly what this is. You've got Punk IPA, the original, and then you've got a photocopy of it. And then you've got a photocopy of a photocopy. That's, that's kind of where we're at at the minute. Um, don't get me wrong, they're both poor examples of an IPA style at this point. Um, Brewdog, I mean, they don't like to say it, they don't need to say it, they're going into the macro market because it's where the money is. Um, they've got a strong brand, they've got lots of brand loyalty, and they don't really need to try anymore. I still like Brewdog bars, I still want to like Brewdog beers, but they're making it difficult. I moved to Aberdeen in 2010, and one of the things I was most excited about was that it was the home of Brewdog. They'd only been going a couple of years at that point. Their original flagship bar is still there. I was so excited to go visit it. And the beer was really good. And it was a small little place and everybody knew what they were talking about. And it was always good stuff. And that's not. But hey, their shares are still worth a fortune. So that's something, right? Well, that's my thoughts on the anti-establishment IPA and sort of the current state of punk IPA as well. Would I buy either again? They're both cheap. Um. To be honest, for what you're getting from them, if it was a hot day and I was in the mood for an IPA, yeah, maybe, but I'd probably just go for like a bottle of cask ale. Not obviously not cask ale, but you get what I mean, like, you know, bottled ale, because there's not really much that these are offering at this point that sort of your traditional ales in a bottle aren't offering as well. And I quite like ales in bottles. I know I'm a bit of a philistine when it comes to the whole YouTube community, but oh, it's got to be hoppy and spiky and amazing, but I, 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 I like a bottle of Raven Ale every once in a while, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. It's, would I still pick up Punk IPA? I don't think I would, just because it makes me sad now, because it used to be better. Uh, let me know down below, what are your thoughts on the Brewdog redesign? 
how their beers are at the minute? Do you still drink Brewdog? Do you agree that it's gone downhill? Do you think I'm talking rubbish? Have you tried the anti-establishment IPA? What do you think of it? Do you get Lidl and Aldi confused all the time? Let me know down below. Thumb the video if you enjoyed this. Um, and if you feel like financially supporting the channel as well, um, there'll be some links down below to my Patreon. Um, I've got three tiers at the minute and I've got people in each tier. Um, so thank you very much to the people that are helping me to make this content so far and helped put some money towards this this month. Um, your contributions are very gratefully received um, and your names will be scrolling up at the end of the video. For now though, thank you very much for watching and do join me next time where I'll be drinking something else.